car maintenance may not be as simple as it seems. Me, I love cars, but I can't hold a spanner to save my life. That's not saying that I can't take a thingamajiggy and twist a thingamabob. Wow. Little Mermaid reference, that's a red flag right there. Look, what I'm trying to say is that maintaining your car without the proper education or training will can be a daunting task. Car ownership is a responsibility. It's like having a baby. Sometimes they leak and you need to change. Except the car at least doesn't crap like a baby. Look, they eat that much and then what comes out is like a septic tank for the army. And it's still, wait, where was I? Look. Car maintenance, right. Look, we're gonna get back on track and tell you everything that you need to know and take note of when maintaining your car. And to keep things simple, we won't really dive into the nitty gritty of things because we actually have an article out on autodeal.com.ph and if you'd like to read that article, click right here. Starting off with our list is number 10 and it is to feed your car with the right fuel. It's a hot topic among enthusiasts. Do premium fuels actually help? Do they make your car perform better? And the answer to that question is, well, it depends on your car. Really, time and time again, we've been asked, can the engine produce more horses if I fill it up with super premium gasoline? Sadly, the answer is not always. See, economy cars don't really benefit too much from premium fuels. At best, the performance gain is very marginal, but on high performance cars, it's a different story. If you do have a car that has a turbocharger or some fancy smanchy engine like the Mazda Skyactiv technology, it could net you a few more ponies if you fill up with premium or super premium fuels. So that means 95 octane and up or premium diesel. For most cars, you can run on 91 no problem. It's important to consult with your manual as to what the best fuel is. You could be burning your extra money away just by filling up with 97 octane fuel when your car really doesn't need it. Also, filling your car with the wrong type of fuel may cause problems later on for your engine. And some people have modified their engines to run certain types of fuel, so if you do, keep running that fuel or higher. Most people don't actually modify their engines, so mm, you're good. Number nine is like lube, get the right oil at the right time. Now onto the most commonly and probably the most notorious maintenance item you have to attend to on a regular basis, oil. Let's lay it out. On the affordable end, you have mineral oil. Slightly more expensive, but better, you get semi-synthetic. And the most expensive is fully synthetic. Now, regardless of what you pick, the manufacturer will be quick to recommend you a specific brand and type of oil to use in your car. Our advice is to follow their recommendations as they know your car best because they made the damn thing. However, if you do want to change the oil in your car, there is this thing called a manual that will let you know what is the best oil to use and the best weight depending on the type. One thing that you can't be late for is your interval. You cannot miss out on your oil change. Your car's not gonna stop automatically. No, nothing like that. But bad oil can cause friction, not the good type of friction either. And parts may start rubbing against each other. Again, not the good type of rubbing against each other. And that could cause problems for your engine later on. Number eight on our list is use the car's electronics only. And I do mean only when the engine is running. If you have a habit of using your car's radio while the engine is off, stop doing that. You run the risk of draining your battery to the point where you can't start the car anymore. Most car batteries are lead acid and if they get discharged, you will need to swap it out. Otherwise, you'll be left with a very expensive paperweight. Wherever you leave your car, make sure that it's not in the accessory mode. Also, make sure that all the lights are turned off as well. The car brakes. No, that's not how you spell it. B-R-A-K-E-S, brakes. Got it? Make sure that your brakes are in working order. Follow the sequence of events to determine if your brake pads need changing. Stop, listen, then look. Kind of like crossing the street. Come to a stop and then listen for any squeaks. If you hear a high-pitched squeak every time you come to a stop, then that means you need a new set of brake pads. Look to confirm your suspicions. If you feel wobbling at high speeds, then you might need to get your rotors checked. The bottom line is, if you apply the brakes and you're not stopping efficiently with a lot of noise, mayday, we got a problem. Oh, and make sure your brake fluid isn't low and fill it up with the right kind, DOT3 or DOT4. Oh, DOT5 slash 5.1. Consult your manual yet again for the right kind. 
it doesn't stop there. If your car is equipped with a drifting mechanism, you know, the handbrake, a de mano, you might have to get that checked every once in a while because over time, the cable does stretch and can snap. So that may need some changing. Number six is make sure that all your wheels are properly aligned. Has this ever happened to you? Have you ever been in a car or a Jeep or a bus, a taxi, whatever it may be, and you're going down the highway and you are going in a straight line, but the steering wheel is kind of askew, off turn, or God knows, whatever it is, it's not straight. That, my friends, is bad wheel alignment. If you don't, you will get uneven tire wear and be like friggin' confused like Lightning McQueen on a dirt track because you're going straight when you actually aren't because your wheel is tilted. Number five is rotate your tires. No, not rotate your tire, rotate your, come on, man. Life hack. Most cars on the road are two wheel drive or have a bias to one pair of wheels if it is all wheel drive. Now for most two wheel drive cars, the tires that wear out the fastest will be on the driven wheels. For cars and most crossovers, expect that the front wheels will be bald faster than Gino's head at a barber shop compared to the tires at the back. Okay, not exactly, but you catch my drift. Though the hack here is that you can take the non-driven wheels and swap them over to extend the life of your current set of tires. Of course, your manual comes with information on how to properly rotate your tires, so follow that. Number four, very simple, check the tire pressure. The more observant of you will notice if your car's tire is getting a bit soft. Tires lose pressure over time or faster due to small punctures. Make sure to always check your tire pressure or at least have a regular interval at which you do so. A tire that is underinflated will cost you a good bit of fuel economy. So fill up with air so you don't have to fill up with as much gas. If you have to fill your tires pretty often, then that might be a sign that it's pretty worn or it may have a puncture and it may need a plug to keep the tire intact. Number three is keep your car clean. I'm looking at you, Jack. You guys gotta see his car. It is a mess. It doesn't matter if you have the nicest car in the world because if it's covered in muck and grime, ugh. unless of course it's a Jimny, in which case it looks pretty badass covered in mud. <laughs> My tip here is to clear your car of trash after every single ride that you do and get it vacuumed every once in a while. It's great to take all the containers out, but it's something else when you get the crumbs out of the car too. Number two is do not miss an interval and call ahead. Do people still use this? Please, please, please attend to your car's needs. Your vehicle gets you from point A to point B, protects you from the rain, and gives you aircon on the busiest streets and highways. So please always schedule your maintenance intervals in advance. Give a heads up if you are bringing your car in for service. This will allow the dealership, service center, or whatever, time to prepare for you and fit you into their busy schedules. Yes, we get it. Maintenance can be a hassle, but hassling others with your hassle is just a hassle. You get me? So don't be Hasselhoff and make sure to get an appointment set on time. Oh, and pro tip, befriend your service advisor and or your mechanic. I mean, it'll make scheduling a heck of a lot easier. And really the last thing that you wanna do is fight your mechanic. The least that they can do is, you know, break your car or loosen a bolt or cut your brake wires or lines. Oh man, yeah, don't get them mad. And number one on our list for tips and tricks and maintenance for your car is drive it. Drive your car. Yes, yes, I know, it seems counterintuitive to everything that we've said, but hear me out. Cars are designed and built to be driven. And if it's not being run at least once a week, the oil could go bad quicker or the battery could discharge on you or paint can start to wear down because of tree sap, bird droppings or sun damage. In whatever case, you need to drive your car. Keep the fluids flowing. Give it the old Italian tune-up. Okay, that last thing, not really. But you get the picture. Stretch its legs. It's like a dog. Walk it. Use it from time to time. And if you're not using it, well, that sucks. It's all just good practice. If you notice manufacturers post maintenance intervals at X amount of kilometers or Y amount of time, whichever comes first. So meaning that even if you don't drive your car, you need to attend to the maintenance anyway when the time comes. So drive it to make the most out of it. So there you have it, our 10 tips and tricks for car maintenance. We hope it gives you some insight. We understand that it isn't quite that comprehensive, but it's a great place to start. Stay safe, everyone. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon.